Hi, I'm Dronius and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my review series of Pokemon Aim to be a Pokemon Master, where I review each episode in more extended detail by giving my thoughts and opinions without taking 10 minutes or less. And at the end, I'll be ranking each review on a tier list from S, A, B, C, D, and F. For this video, I'll be talking about Episode 1, The Beginning of the Cold Eternal Road. Only 5% of you guys watching this video are subscribed, which is kind of sad to be honest. So before we begin, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to be notified of videos and shorts in the future. Without further ado, let's begin. I gotta say, this episode was a solid start to the epilogue series. Visually, the art, color palette, and the environment all look amazing. Even scenes where Ash and Pikachu are going through the forest emitting tons of wild Pokemon are pleasing to the eyes. It's proof that the studio behind the show had plenty of time to flesh out the world it takes place in, and not have serious crunch time or deadline issues in the process. Story-wise, it was fine for a first entry. The writing was good, but the humor at the beginning was a little sus. Especially when the duo were trying to cross the river and Ash falls in by accident only to have three magic carps. Uh... Look, no matter how old any of you guys are, you have to remember that the Pokemon anime is aimed towards a younger demographic. I'm sure the 9 year olds will enjoy a gag like this, but as a 24 year old, I was cringing a little on the inside. What I did find funny was how Meowth casually walks up to Ash and Pikachu while they were occupied with looking at the environment and wild Pokemon around them. This cat literally pulled a Bill Clinton Game Awards on them and it took them a few seconds to notice that something was wrong. Out of any ambush that Team Rocket has done to capture Pikachu, this was easily one of my favorite ways they did so. Speaking of Team Rocket, I like how they didn't just show up for a minute or two, get their ass kicked for the 1 millionth time, and never show up again for the rest of the episode. They made two attempts in capturing Pokemon throughout the runtime and their presence was great. Latias being the main focus of the episode was great too. I saw a lot of people in the Anipoke community saying that it could be the same Latias from the 5th movie, how Ash had 5 of his older Pokemon appear in his party and was hoping for him to catch it. But I already knew that boy wasn't gonna get it. I still liked how he once again risked his life to save Latias from Team Rocket and that made the Pokemon trust him. My only major complaint that I have about this episode is Ash's reserves. It's not that I hate him rotating his Pokemon throughout this epilogue series. Hell, this is Ash and Pikachu's last adventure as main protagonists, their Endwalker expansion to end off an era of the anime. The only other thing Pokemon Journeys didn't do is have his older Mons participate in the Masters tournament alongside their trainer, so they might as well go all out. My main problem is that the writers are seemingly giving us good fan service or closure to every Pokemon Ash has caught at the cost of sacrificing continuity. As far as I'm aware, in episode 135 of Pokemon Journeys, Ash told his old Mons that they won't be seeing each other for a while. Yet here they are inside of their Pokeballs in the kid's back pocket. There was no indication that time has passed since the final episode of Journeys. There was no flashback scenes showing Ash and Pikachu stopping by Professor Oak's lab and letting him know that he wants to bring everyone with him. Hell, even Delia and Oak themselves haven't received the call from the boy since he left, so not even they know where he's currently at. And to make this not sit well for me even more, you watch the preview of Episode 2 where Ash and Pikachu meet up with Misty, and Ash's Rowlet is with them. Did he go back to the Alola region and picked up his Alolan team off screen? Maybe he even went back to Kalos to pick up Gudra and Greninja too. Again, I'm not against him using his reserves, it's better late than never. It's good fan service and I'm all for it. I just wish that they didn't make Ash and Pikachu gather the whole Avengers off screen, because when his older Pokemon show up with no explanation as to how they got there, it ruins my experience with the story. And it's jarring to see. Maybe they'll explain it in better detail in a future episode, but even if they did, they should have done that in the first episode or show still images of Ash getting his Pokemon together like a PowerPoint slideshow. That alone would have made up for it. In conclusion, this episode was good for the most part. The animation, art style, and colors were beautiful. Ash and Pikachu's interaction was great. Latias and Team Rocket was also great, and I still love how Meowth threw the two of them off guard by casually walking up to them. The music was fantastic, and the visuals for the new opening was nostalgic, while also being a fantastic way to send Ash off into the sunset. Him rotating his older Pokemon throughout this series is going to be amazing to see from start to finish. But I also wish the writers didn't sacrifice the continuity over amazing fan service and just keep the two elements together to make this a better experience. We still have 10 more episodes to go, so I'll be looking forward to what comes next for our 10 year old world champion and his mustard colored electric rat. Putting this episode into the tier list, I'm giving it an A rank. 